Hello my traveling friends, this is the Tinker Mom back with more tips on how you can integrate learning and education into traveling with your children. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my home city of Boston. Um, I live just outside of Boston, so it's a place that I go to um, pretty frequently with my children. It's one of the birthplaces of the American Revolution. So it's a wonderful place to visit um, if your children are interested in American history and you're, they're learning about American history so you can see the actual sites um, where a lot of the history took place. So the first thing that I want to talk about is arriving in Boston and getting around Boston. Boston can be a pretty expensive city, so I'm going to talk, focus a little bit today on the things that you can do that are either free or inexpensive. So if you arrive in Boston and you're gonna and you land at Logan Airport, I recommend that you consider taking the T. Um, the T is our underground rail, rail train system, um, and right from Logan Airport, you can take there's a shuttle that goes around to all of the different terminals, and will pick you up and take you to the airport station um, where you can get the Blue Line. So you would ride the Blue Line into Boston. And from there, you would probably go to Government Center. And at Government Center, you can take a Green Line train, which will take you right into the heart of the city. It's a pretty short ride. Um, Logan is really very centrally located, so it's actually easy to take public transportation right into, um, right into the center of the city. So one thing that I do recommend that you do consider spending a little bit of extra on is your hotel. It's really worth it to stay in a centrally located um, location in Boston because it's really walkable city and anywhere that you can't walk, you can take the T. So um, spending a little bit of more money on your hotel, you'll actually get to save a lot of time traveling from site to site and you can do a lot more walking around the city. <clears throat> so a uh, good area to stay is near the Boston Common and the Boston Public garden. That's a really great area. You're really central there and you're right on the green line. So it's easy to get to from the airport if you're taking the tape. So before you come to Boston, one thing that you might want to check out is the National Park site. The National Park Service and the park rangers lead um, tours from Faneuil Hall that are free um, and they are fantastic. They do tours of the Freedom Trail there's one that goes down toward um, from Faneuil Hall to the State House, and then there's another one that goes up through the north end of Boston, which is a really old part of the city that has a lot of character. It's um, predominantly Italian part of the city, but a lot of the old buildings are still standing, and it's it's a really beautiful part of Boston. And um, if you take that tour, it'll take you by Paul Revere Park, which is just right outside of the Old North Church. So you can pop up and see the Old North Church. And you can also visit the Paul Revere House, which is the actual house where Paul Revere lived. And you can see one of the bells that was cast in his foundry. So it's definitely worth a stop. And of course, while you're in the North End, um, you should take part in a long time uh, competition between the two pastry shops that are just about a block away from each other. There's Mike's Pastry and Modern Pastry, and I, I definitely recommend that you go to both of them and try a cannoli in each place and decide for yourself which one you like the best. Um, definitely worthwhile. And then if you head back to Faneuil Hall, right along the Freedom Trail, you'll see the Union Oyster House. And Union Oyster House is a great place to stop in and sit at the bar and have a cup of chowder and a Sam Adams at the bar. It's one of the oldest operating restaurants in the United States um, and it's full of history. I believe John Kennedy used to go there. A lot of um, political leaders will go sit at the bar there um, and you can go ha ha sit at the bar which is what I prefer to do when I go. When I have friends visiting from out of town we always go sit at the bar and um, just sort of take in some of that history and it's a great place for people watching also. Um, and the bartenders will be happy to give you lots of tips of what you should see in Boston also. And finally, I just wanted to talk about the Boston Public Garden, which is one of my absolute pl favorite places to visit in Boston. 
it's a beautiful park. Um, you can get your lunch and go sit out on the grass there and have a picnic. Um, it's the home of the famous swan boats from the book Make Way for Ducklings. And um, you might want to check out their prices online. I'll put some links down in the comments below. Um, last time I went, it was about $4 to ride the swan boats, which is very reasonable for Boston um, and for a major sort of touristy thing because um, things can be quite expensive. So $4 is really not um, expensive for Boston. And uh, it's worthwhile doing. It's a really nice little boat ride around the pond, and there are tons of ducks, and it's just really fun, especially for kids. And then you can pop over to one of the corner, the far corners near Charles Street is the Make Way for Duckling statues, where the kids can actually, there's duckling statues, and the kids can sit on the ducklings, and you can take pictures, and it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited. I have a couple of really great trips coming up that I'm excited to get stuff to share with all of you. The kids and I are going to head to Plymouth um, next weekend for a day trip. Uh, we're just a couple of weeks outside of Thanksgiving, so I'm excited to go there with them to go to Plymouth Plantation. And then um, in the beginning of December, I'm going to be heading out to L.A. for work. And then I decided to sneak in a couple of days at Disneyland, which I'm so excited because I've never been to Disneyland before. So um, I hope to get all kinds of stuff to share with all of you. And uh, until then, thank you for joining me and Magical Travels.